Good morning, Celebration City kids. I'm so excited to be able to come into your homes another Sunday and be able to share with you God's word and his message that he speaks through me to y'all. Um, I miss y'all. Um, I hope all of y'all are doing well. Um, I got to see some of y'all's pictures from last Sunday on how y'all were spending your time outside or with family. So it was good to see y'all's shining faces. Um, I hope some of y'all took advantage and got to do some of um, the artwork that Miss Tanya shared. Um, if you haven't, if you did do them but didn't get to share with your pictures, I'd still love for you to share them with me so I can see those beautiful butterflies. Um, this week we're going to talk uh, a little bit about faith and what it is and how each one of y'all have been planted with the seed of faith in y'all and how you can get it to sprout. Um, this Sunday, uh, again, uh, I brought one of uh, my very special friends um, to share with y'all in depth about what she feels uh, faith is about. Um, and it's... Um, it's Miss Tanya again, so I'm so glad she agreed to come along and uh, share with uh, with y'all. And um, so I'll bring her here a little bit. Um, so I'm going to take us into prayer. And uh, if y'all would bow your heads and I'll pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for each child that is here watching and wanting to learn more about you, Lord. Thank you for the knowledge that you give us. Thank you for the love that you pour out to us. Thank you for the peace and the understanding, Lord. Lord, thank you for putting people in our lives to where when we lose focus, um, you help us, you use them to guide us back to you. Lord, thank you. Thank you for even when there's a storm going on, Lord, you, we look to you and you calm it, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the faith that we can have in you, knowing that everything's going to be okay. Everything will come to peace. You'll take care of each and every one of us. And we just have to focus on that, Lord. Lord, thank you for um, allowing us to finish our schoolwork at home through the internet um, to where we can still get good grades and finish out this school year strong and be able to pass the grades that we're in to where we can go into our next grade for next year, Lord. Lord, thank you for each teacher that guides these children, Lord helping them to stay focused on their schoolwork as well. Thank you for their hearts and their dedication. Lord, thank you for the mom and dads that are able to stay at home and spend time with their children to guide them in the right direction with their schoolwork and with you. And thank you for the deepening of the relationships, Lord. Lord, we thank you for all your blessings. We bless you. We praise you through your son's holy, precious name. Amen. All right. So this uh, Sunday, we're going to talk about faith. And what is faith? So I brought a very special friend along that I love dearly and uh, who's helping me out. And it's our little teacher. It's Miss Tanya. So she's brought a great message and she's got something very fun at the end. So if you'll stay tuned, there's something very fun at the end that she shares with uh, Ruby and uh, Annie. And uh, I think Ellie gets on there a couple of times. Uh, and I think you might hear Noah's voice in the background, but they've got something special at the end as well. So if you'll stay tuned, you'll get to see that. So before we get to them, uh, of course we, um, we have to get uh, jumping and moving and shaking. So uh, I'd like to lead us in worship. So uh, if y'all get up and get ready to jump, uh, I've got a great worship song for y'all. All right, enjoy. 
My God is so big and so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God. Celebration City friends, how are you this morning? Today we are going to talk about faith. We're going to talk about four Bible heroes of faith and we're going to see how God called them, how they responded, and how there's fruit from what they did in obedience to God. The first one we're going to look at is Noah and the second one is Abraham, then Esther, and Mary, mother of Jesus. So let's get started. Our first hero of faith is Noah. Noah's Ark, Genesis 6 through chapter 9. After Adam and Eve left the garden, many people were born. The people kept doing bad things and they forgot about God. Except Noah. Noah loved God. God was sad that everyone but Noah forgot about him. He told Noah about his plan to start over. Make yourself an ark, God said. Here's how. So Noah and his family began working on the ark. When it was done, God said, Take your family and two of every animal into the ark. Animals creeped, crawled, hopped, and galloped onto Noah's new boat. After everyone was inside, the rains began to fall and fall and fall. The ark rocked this way and that way on the rising water. Finally, the rain stopped. Water covered everything. Everyone inside the ark was safe. Noah and his family were very happy. One day, Noah sent a dove to find land. It flew and flew but never found any, so it came back. One week later, Noah sent the dove out again. 
This time it brought him an olive leaf. Noah cheered. It must have found land. The ark finally came to rest on the top of a mountain. God told Noah to leave the ark. Noah and his family praised God. God put a beautiful rainbow in the sky. It was a sign of his promise to never flood the whole earth again. God had a call on Noah's life. The call was to build an ark. And Noah's response was, okay, I will do it. And the fruit of that is that God promised to never flood the earth again. And he made that promise with Noah. And now today we can see rainbows in the sky after it rains. And it's a reminder of God's promise to Noah that he will never flood the earth again. So our next Bible hero of faith is Abraham. A new home, Genesis 12 through chapter 17. Abraham loved God, so did his wife Sarah. One day God told Abraham to move to a new land. So along with their helpers, Abraham and Sarah packed up and went. Then God gave Abraham a blessing. God said, all the land you see here will be yours forever. Also, you and Sarah will be blessed with many children. God led Abraham and Sarah to a place called Hebron. It was beautiful. The visitors. One hot day, Abraham was resting near his tent. He heard footsteps. Three men were standing nearby. Abraham went out to greet them. Would you like to rest in the shade? We have plenty of cool water to drink. Can I get you something to eat? Abraham told Sarah about the visitors. He asked her to make a tasty meal. While they were eating, the three visitors shared some exciting news. They said, your wife is going to have a son. Sarah heard what they said. She laughed, thinking, I am too old. God asked Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? Anything is possible with the Lord. Sure enough, the next year, Sarah had a baby boy. They named him Isaac. God called Abraham to leave his home and to go to a new land. And Abraham, he obeyed. He did what God said because he knew it was God speaking to him and it was the right thing to do. And he was excited. He was excited to do it. But you know, he went to that new land and God said, Abraham, look everywhere, all around you, the north, the south, the east, and the west. I am going to give this land to you, everything that you can see for your children and your children's children. And Abraham was so puzzled. He was like, God, I am old and I don't have any children. And God said, do not worry. He said, do not be afraid. I am your shield and your very great reward. God said, Abraham, look up in the sky. Your descendants are going to be as numerous as the stars in the sky. Abraham just could not understand. But you know, God, when God fulfilled his promise to Abraham, and when he was 99 years old, 99 years old, God gave him a son, and his name was Isaac. And it's true, God um, blessed his life, and now... Abraham has many descendants, and you know what? We are one of them. Have you heard that song? Father Abraham had many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord. That's where that song came from. We are all descendants of Abraham. Our next Bible hero of faith is Esther. The Brave Queen, Esther 1 through chapter 10. Esther was Jewish. That means she was an Israelite. She lived in the land of Persia with her older cousin Mordecai. The king of Persia needed a new queen. He announced, bring me the most beautiful women from all over my kingdom. Esther was one of the women sent to the palace. When the king met Esther, he chose her to be his queen. Haman was the king's chief helper. He hated the Jewish people. They were God's people. Haman wanted everyone to bow down to him. 
Mordecai refused to bow down to Haman. Mordecai would only bow down to God. Haman went to the king. He said, The Jews are bad people. You should sign a law that will help me get rid of them. So the king signed the new law. God's people were in great danger. Mordecai heard about the new law. He ran to tell Esther, You must save yourself and the rest of God's people. Perhaps God has made you queen for this reason. So Esther came up with a plan. It would be very risky for her. Esther invited the king and Haman to a special dinner. Then she asked the king, Why does Haman want to get rid of me? The king was surprised. He said, I am, she said, I am Jewish. Haman tricked you into signing a new law that would get rid of all the Jews. The king told his guards, Arrest Haman. Then he made Mordecai his new chief helper. He told Queen Esther, I will make a new law that will keep you and your people safe. God used Esther to save his people. Queen, and God called her to be a queen at a specific time. And she answered that call. And when she was asked to go and save her people, she was brave. And she had to have faith that the king would save her people and also not hurt her because the king um, had a law that if anyone came into the inner court without him calling them to come visit him that he would have them put to death and so the and so Esther couldn't just go in and say hi to the king anytime she wanted even though she was queen she had to wait until he called her into the inner courts to come to his throne and so she knew she had to save her family and her people. So she asked um, Mordecai, her cousin, to fast for three days and she would do the same. Fasting means to um, pray instead of doing something you really want to do, like eat a meal or watch TV or play video games or something. And so they prayed very hard for a very important reason and for three days. And so when Esther it was, when it was time, after those three days were up, she got dressed, she walked into the inner court, and the king saw her there and reached his gold scepter out and invited her in to speak to him. And he's like, I will give you anything you request up to half of my kingdom. And so she prepared a banquet and invited the person who wanted to kill her people. And then she told the king, she's like, he wants to hurt me and my people. And the king was so sad and upset and angered that he um, changed the law and Esther's people were saved. So our last Bible hero of faith is Mary, mother of Jesus. An angel visits Mary, Luke 1, verses 26 through 38. God sent the angel Gabriel to visit a young woman. Her name was Mary. She was scared. She had never seen an angel before. Gabriel said, Don't be afraid. You are very special to God. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son. You must name him Jesus. He will be called the Son of the Most High God. Mary asked, How can it be so? I am not married. Gabriel answered, With God all things are possible. Mary said, I love God. I will do what he has chosen me to do. And God called her as a young woman who was engaged to Joseph. And he said, Mary, you are going to become pregnant and have a baby by the Holy Spirit. And he is going to be called the Son of God, the Son of the Most High God. And you are to name him Jesus. And so Mary didn't understand. She was actually scared at first. And the angel said, Mary, do not be afraid. For nothing is impossible with God. And she um, wasn't sure. She wasn't sure how she was going to explain everything to Joseph because she was pregnant and it wasn't his baby. But she just knew after the angel said not to be afraid that he, God was going to take care of everything. And he did. And so Mary went to Joseph and Joseph um at first, he did not understand, but an angel came to him and told him what happened, and he was okay with everything. He understood, and he loved Mary, and he trusted God, and so we know the rest of the story. He took Mary, and they rode on a donkey 
to Bethlehem and there was no room in the inn and so they stayed in the manger and Jesus was born. So the Bible has a few things to say about faith. Actually, the Bible has a lot of things to say about faith, but one thing we're going to look at is Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. It says, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. And, you know, all four Bible heroes of faith, Noah, Abraham, Esther, and Mary, when God called them to do that special thing, they none of them could see the end result. But you know, they didn't. That didn't stop them. They had faith in God, and they trusted that He was going to protect them and fulfill His promise and call to what He asked them to do. And so, um, that is something that we can have as well. We can have faith. And there's another verse that says. Truly, I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, because nothing is impossible with God. So, do you know that we all have a call on our lives? We do. And even though whatever God calls us to do, if we're scared, if we have faith as small as a mustard seed, we can tell a big mountain to move from here to there because of our faith in God, because nothing is impossible with God. There are a few verses that are in the Bible that tell us that God has a call and a plan for our life. And the first one is Jeremiah 29 11. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you a hope and a future. And there's another one in Ephesians 2.10 that says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So see, God has prepared a plan for your life. And so it is up to us to listen for God's call. And when he calls us to have faith and trust that he is going to provide everything we need to complete that call on our lives. And then we can see the fruit. Sometimes we get to see it here on earth, but sometimes we don't. And we just are trusting that God will fulfill his word and as he called us to do his work. So this is my friend, Mr. Seed. Can you say hi? Hi, Mr. Seed. So Mr. Seed is um, kind of an oval shape. He kind of looks like a bean, and he has a hard shell casing around him. And so God is going to call Mr. Seed to do something for him. And so I'm going to read in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6 through 18. I'm not going to read all of those verses, just some verses. And Mr. Seed is going to carry out these verses. God says, Let light shine out of darkness. Um, God made his light shine in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. So right now, Mr. Seed is above ground. He can see the sun, but God is going to ask him to go into a dark place, which is the soil, and he's going to do that. So let's see how he does that. Okay, so he is buried in the ground, and he's turned sideways. He's not standing straight up anymore, and he's kind of wondering, he's like, what's going on? But while he's in there, he starts to feel pressed because something is happening, change is happening in his little body, in his little seed. And <clears throat> verse 7 says, <clears throat> excuse me, but we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. We are perplexed, like sometimes we don't understand, but not in despair, not without hope. We are persecuted, sometimes we're mocked or made fun of or teased, but we're not abandoned. God doesn't leave us. We are struck down, we may fall over or fall down, but we're not destroyed. 
We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. So that's what's happening to Mr. Seed. He is being hard pressed on every side because some change is happening. He's not being crushed. Something is going on that's good. He doesn't quite understand everything, but he still has hope because, you know, even underground, God's with him because it says you're persecuted but not abandoned. And God is with him even in the dark place. He's surrounded by God's love and he's trusting because God is making a change in his life. He's trusting God. He's struck down, but he's not destroyed. He's not destroyed at all. We're going to see. He's really not destroyed. Um, we are alive. Um, he's alive. He's being given over to death, his life as he knew it for Jesus' sake. But his life is also going to be revealed. Um, death may be at work, may look like it's at work in him. But life is at work, actually. So let's see what happens next. Ah, what happened? He's no longer the, the seed. He's now a little sprout. So this is Mr. Seed. We might could rename him Mr. Sprout. Do you know that Abraham, his name was actually Abram, and God renamed him Abraham? So let's do that with Mr. Seed. He's no longer going to be Mr. Seed. He's going to be Mr. Sprout. And so, he's not lost heart because God is with him. And he is changing him into something new. Okay, so in the scripture, we see that in verse 13, it says, It is written, I believed, therefore I have spoken. Since we have that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you to himself. All this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. So, what is happening right now is this little sprout is being raised up. He is um, going to reach more and more people and give glory to God. So let's see what happens next. Mr. Sprout, he is now out and above the ground and he's an actual little plant. And you know what? Plants, when they are fully grown, they have little seeds inside. And do you know that he started off as one seed, but because he went through that change that God had for him, he became a plant and now he has a bunch of seeds. It's kind of like Abraham. You know, Abraham was one man and God promised that he was gonna have descendants as numerous as the stars. And do you know that plants produce seeds, so many seeds, some, some, some plants, like sunflowers, they produce like tons and hundreds of seeds. So God does this. He makes us um, go into hard places sometimes, but he's with us. And then he brings us up, raises us in new life because he wants to show um, others his glory. And he's using Mr. Sprout right now to show the glory of God, just like he can use us to show his glory. Um, because he, that's what he created us to do, is to love him and to um, become his children. And he's going to have that plan for our lives that reveal him and bring him glory. So let's pray together. Father, I thank you for these children and I thank you for your lesson of faith. Father, I ask that you just help us have um, just even the smallest faith to trust in you when things get hard or when you call us to do something that we may not understand or maybe even a little bit afraid of, Father, that we trust you to carry out the good works that you have called us to do. 
So, Father, I bless these children and ask that you just watch over them this week and uh, give their parents and um, caregivers just an extra amount of uh, love and endurance to get through and peace. Father, just fill their homes with peace, with joy, with laughter, and just bless them um, throughout the week. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, we are going to play a game called Guess Who? Annie has four seeds in her hand, and she's going to help us. Okay, Annie, can you put one seed in the red in the red flower pot? Can you put one seed inside? Stick it inside. Can you do that? You got it? Okay, perfect. This first Bible hero of faith, his name is... A name of someone in our family. God. God, maybe. Noah. He Jesus. Was. Jesus. Maybe. He was asked by God to build an ark. Noah, Noah, Noah. Yes, sir. Is it Noah? Yeah. Noah? I'm like, I'm like one okay. Of the All right, it's Noah. So let's get. Noah's um, flower. Okay, hold on. Okay, so Annie has the flower of Noah. What is it, Annie? What kind of flower is it? A rainbow. A rainbow. <laughs> why do you think it's a rainbow? Can somebody guess why it's a rainbow? God sent a rainbow to show that he would never flood the earth again. That's right. The rainbow is a sign of God's covenant with Noah saying... That he will never flood the earth again. Annie, can you put it in our red flower pot for Noah? Good job, Annie. Thank you. Okay. Well, I have, I have two left. You have two, two yep. left? Okay. Can you put a seed in the blue flower pot? Right, so she's putting a seed in the blue flower pot. I don't do it. Oh, you did it. Good job. Okay, so this Bible hero, he was very, very old when he was going to have a son. And his wife laughed when she found out she was going to have a baby. And he said that... Abraham! Abraham. It's Abraham. But yes. his first name was Abraham, but he got renamed Abraham. That's right. Good job, Billy. God t promised Abraham that he would have descendants as numerous as the stars. Oh! And so that is why Abraham's flower has stars on it. Okay. Good job, everybody. Ruby is putting a, a seed in the purple flower pot. I'm going to put the flower in, too. Okay. So let's see if we can figure out who flower will go in the purple flower pot. Okay. This person is a lady. It's a female. And she was born for such a time as this because there was a man who wanted to destroy her people, the Jewish people. But she approached the king and said, said, may I please have favor with you and have a banquet. And when they had that banquet, they invited the band who wanted to kill her people. And she, the king saved all her people. So who is she? Can anyone guess? Esther. Esther, good she job. What is on the flower that reminds us of Esther? What is Because she was a queen? She was a queen. So there's a crown on the flower. And she saved everybody's awesome. lives. Awesome. Good job, everybody. Yes, flowering. Annie is going to put our last seed in the flower pot. Okay, let's see if we can guess who this last hero of faith is. This is also a girl. And when she was very young, an angel came to her and said, You will have a baby. And he will be the son of God, and you will name him Jesus. Jesus, just like, or just like I said. Yes, 
So, who is this lady? Okay. Mary! Yes, Mary, mother of Jesus. Ruby, can you put the flower in the pot? Okay, why do y'all think that there are crosses on that flower? To because Jesus died on the middle one, and that's why there's a heart. Yes, so it shows that God fulfilled his promise to Mary that she... That's why I love you! Yes, that means love. God loves us. I hope y'all had fun with that. Um... Our four heroes of faith, Noah, Abraham, Esther, and Mary, mother of Jesus. Bye. Bye-bye. Great day. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you, Miss Tanya, for sharing with us how four people's faith bloomed into big, beautiful things. And you know, kids, you can have the same faith they had. You just have to look to Jesus and your faith can begin to sprout as well. You can find more about faith in God's word, the Bible. So this week, I'd like y'all to meditate on the Bible verse, one that Miss uh, Tanya shared, and that is Hebrews 11.1. 1. And it says, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see okay so if you'll meditate on this week meditate on that this week uh, and we'll come back next Sunday and we'll talk more about faith okay so I wanted to ask have y'all noticed the shirts that Miss Tanya and I are wearing well you can get one of these shirts as well and me and Tanya have made a decision to tell Jesus, to whom shall I go? That no matter what comes our way, we will stay with Jesus because he gives eternal life. And that's John 668. So just let me know if you'd like one of these shirts as well so you can show off your faith for Jesus. Okay, so before I go, I want to remind y'all that if y'all need prayer for anything or you'd like a uh, prayer for anyone that's close to you, um, just let me know or Miss Tanya know and just click on the live prayer button, the prayer request button on the bottom right hand side of your screen. And I would love to be praying for you this week. Um, we can even chat between each other if you'd like that, and we can pray with each other. So, um, and then also, if y'all have ever noticed that when you're watching this uh, online lesson, that on the also on the right side of your screen, we can ch chit chat back and forth. You just hit the chat chat button, and we can communi communicate with each other while we're watching the lesson. I would love to hear from y'all, and so would Miss Tanya. Let Miss Tanya know what you think of her lesson as you're watching, okay? All right, well, I love y'all. Miss Tanya loves y'all, and we miss you, and uh, we hope to see you back next Sunday, all right? Y'all have a blessed week. Be blessed and bless others. See y'all next time.